This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from Aperoa's only carbon zero certified renewable electricity company. We only source from wind, hydro and solar and we are the leading supplier of electricity to EVs in Aperoa. You can switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back and a happy new year. It's going to be a great year. I can feel it in my bones. I want to start today's show with a quick editorial and an apology. Last week we were scheduled to give you a clip show, but up here in the Northern Hemisphere, multiple winter storms and visiting family who had to change plans due to winter storms scuppered my editing time. Due to another storm this week, we just, we're just playing catch up. So I hope you understand. I'm sorry. It's CES time in Las Vegas, and while we are not there this year, there's still plenty of stories to cover on today's show. So let's start with one from Sony Honda Mobility. In 2020, Sony unveiled its first concept electric vehicle, a car which it referred to at the time as a technology demonstrator. Last year, it showcased a concept SUV and revealed its intent to make a series EV. It partnered with Honda to establish a joint venture to make that happen. And at this week's CES, we show the results of that partnership, the Alfila electric car. With 45 sensors for autonomous vehicle operation, the latest in-car entertainment and and 5G connectivity, the Alfila is the most polished electric car we've seen from this joint venture to date. Sony Honda Mobility says deliveries will begin in the US in spring 2026, but we don't yet have final pricing or specs. As usual, when we know more, we will share. For some time, customers ordering a new Tesla have been given the option to pay upfront for Tesla's future self-driving software, a feature that's known as Tesla FSD. The amount paid for that feature has slowly increased since it was first offered. Buy a new Tesla today and FSD will add $15,000 to your car's sticker price. We don't know yet when FSD will push to all customers, although it is now available to anyone who purchased it, but it is technically still a beta software feature. What we do now know, though, is how many Tesla customers to date have opted to pay up front for FSD. According to data published this week, 285,000 customers in North America, about 19% of Tesla owners there, have paid for FSD. That's a long way from the 1 million users that Elon Musk had confidently predicted would be using it by the end of last year. We're back to CES now with the reveal of the Ram 1500 Revolution, Stellantis's official answer to the Tesla Cybertruck, Ford F-150 Lightning, Chevrolet Silverado EV and Rivian R1T, among others. Technically still a concept vehicle, the Ram 1500 Revolution features a massive 800 volt lithium ion battery pack that the company says can add 100 miles, 160 kilometers of range in 10 minutes. There's too much to cover here, but the truck promises a choice of two or three rows of seats in the cab, all wheel drive and all wheel steering, and the ability to carry objects of up to 18 feet, five and a half meters in length. There's promise of a range extended variant for customers who want it, a collapse steering wheel and autonomous driving, and something called shadow mode, which will let the truck follow you as you walk ahead. This is actually going to be really useful on farms and construction sites. Also at CES, Volkswagen teased its next mass-produced car, the Volkswagen ID7 sedan. While we got to see a fairly close to production vehicle, it is still wearing full camo. Built on the MEB platform, the Volkswagen ID7 is based on the Volkswagen ID Aero concept we saw a few years ago. Volkswagen promises the ID7 will offer a WLTP test range of up to 700 kilometers, 434 miles per charge, which means we should expect official real world ranges closer to 630 kilometers or 391 miles per charge. As with existing ID models, Volkswagen says the ID Lite and Hello Volkswagen voice control system will feature prominently in the ID7, alongside a new 15 inch center touchscreen display. Volkswagen says it plans to give the vehicle its official production reveal in Q2 this year. 
The second all-electric pickup truck to be built on GM's Ultium platform, the Chevrolet Silverado EV, shares a lot of its underlying DNA with the Hummer EV trophy truck. But Chevrolet is very keen to promote the differences between the two, publishing a new video this week showcasing the towing capabilities of the Silverado EV. Hitching up a pre-production Silverado EV work truck, or WT for short, to a 7,700 pound, 3.5 metric ton RV using a standard tow hitch arrangement, the video features the truck's chief engineer, who calls the truck smooth, controlled and responsive while towing. The Silverado EV WT variant will begin deliveries this spring and in 2025 will be available with a total towing capacity of up to 20,000 pounds, 9 metric tons. That's twice the official towing capacity of the Ford F-150 Lightning. Over the past year or so, we've been watching with interest as the world's electrical grid has become cleaner and cleaner as more and more renewable energy generation goes live. This week, we got the latest update in the energy mix of the US grid last year. And despite some economic uncertainty towards the latter half of the year, the EIA Electric Monthly Power Report shows that 2022 enjoyed the most renewables injected to the US grid ever. In total, year-to-date data through the end of October last year shows that renewables accounted for 22.6% of all energy generated. That's compared to 20.4% in 2021. With the US government offering generous tax breaks and incentives to both large-scale renewable energy generation projects and domestic photovoltaic solar panel installations, I'm eager to see how this year measures up. Automakers were flocking to CES this year to showcase their latest in-car technology and, of course, promote their roadmaps to transition away from ICE vehicles and toward EVs. And in addition to those two things, Stellantis announced something rather unexpected. A partnership with Archer Aviation that will see the two firms further an existing strategic partnership to bring the Archer Midnight eVTOL aircraft to production. In addition to offering Archer Aviation its series production expertise, Stellantis is making a total of $150 million of equity capital available to Archer over the next two years to use, quote, at its discretion, end quote. The Archer Midnight is a four-passenger plus pilot craft that can make short distant trips with zero emissions thanks to an all-electric drive system. Manufacturing of the Midnight is due to start in Georgia with Stellantis's help next year. At the start of last year, it's fair to say that General Motors' electric vehicle sales figures were pretty abysmal due to the stop, sale and recall of the Chevrolet Bolt EV and Bolt EUV. That recall was due to a dangerous manufacturing defect in all Bolt EV and Bolt EUV battery packs that could, under extreme situations, lead to a battery fire. But with production faults identified and rectified, GM was able to work through some of its backlog of recalls last year, as well as resume sales of its Bolt family of EVs. Despite that recall, GM announced this week that its end-of-year figures show that the Bolt EV and Bolt EUV had their best year to date, with GM announcing that sales were particularly strong among young buyers. GM promises that it will expand its EV productions to 70,000 units this year, and I should note that only 2% of all GM's vehicles last year were electric, meaning there's lots of work to be done. At the start of January, Tesla published its official delivery estimates and production figures for the end of last year, totaling a record 405,278 vehicles delivered in the fourth quarter of 22. Although that figure was a record for the company, more than 50,000 vehicles higher than its previous record, as set in the previous quarter, the stock market reacted negatively to the figures as they missed official Wall Street expectations by nearly 15,000 units. It's important to note that Tesla delivered more than 1.3 million electric cars last year, which is far more than any other automaker delivered, and that should be celebrated. Some analysts, like Kathy Wood from ARK Investment, remain bullish about Tesla's future prospects, while other investors view a perceived lack of leadership at Tesla as a bearish sign that things could get worse. Right now, the bears seem to have it, with Tesla prices falling. 
Tesla isn't the only automaker to be suffering at the hands of the stock market bears, though. This week, Rivian also managed to miss expected targets for its vehicle production and delivery, suffering a similarly negative reaction on the stock market. Measured against its own previous production figures, Rivian had a record fourth quarter, producing 10,020 vehicles in the fourth quarter to reach a yearly production total of just shy of 25,000 vehicles. That's great news when you consider that almost half of its annual production came from that final quarter. But if you zoom out, things are less impressive. Rivian had confidently stated during its IPO during 2021 that it would make 50,000 vehicles last year, meaning its actual 2022 production figures were less than one half of what it said they would be. And when that does happen, the stock market reacts very badly indeed. Before we get to the last two stories, I have a quick question. Are you in the market for a new electric car or maybe a new to you electric car? If you are and you are in Aotearoa, you should totally check out our very own buyer's guide at ecotricity.co.nz. It's packed with all the information you need to pick a car that's right for you and includes loads of details about incentives you can get, charging providers you can charge up with, and of course, how you can get charging set up at home. So follow the link below and start your journey today. Vehicle to grid has quickly become a killer feature for any new EV coming to market. I mean, I'm frankly very grateful for it after we suffered not one, but three power cuts in the last week and I've been able to keep our home sort of functional using the power offered by our Ford F-150 Lightning. And of course, many other new electric car models on the market today offer some form of mains power outlet to help essential items stay powered. But I think many of us have forgotten a bit about the original Nissan Leaf and its excellent vehicle to home capabilities courtesy of Chidemo. This week, we were reminded just how useful that car and its V to G can be courtesy of a video from Nissan Australia showing how a winery owner in Australia uses his his Nissan Leaf and V2G to store excess solar energy during the day to then run the winery at night from solar panels. It's a nice reminder that electric vehicles aren't just vehicles. And finally, when you think of the Mercedes-Benz brand, the choices are you think of its long and distinguished history of being the world's first automotive brand and, of course, the classic automotive icons it's produced over the years. You probably don't think about cartoon anthropomorphic characters having fun with giant whales and spaceships, but now that's an association your brain can make, courtesy of a brand tie-in between Mercedes-Benz and Super Plastic, a, quote, global entertainment brand that creates and manages a roster of world-famous synthetic artists and influencers, end quote. And that means that we've got another brand tie-in. In a new video published at CES, Benz has taken the erstwhile nodding dog of generations past and, with Super Plastic's help, turned it into the Super Dackel, a street-savvy, hip-hop-loving, tattooed knuckle, medallion-wearing pupper in shorts. Expect them and their friends to make appearances in new EQ merch as Mercedes tries to get down with the kids and probably sell NFTs in the process. Or, you know, something like that. <laughs> and on that note, we are done for the day. Before I go, though, do make sure you've hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on the latest in EV news from this channel. And of course, if you haven't switched yet, it's about time that you do switch to Aotearoa's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. It is super easy to make the switch, and in doing so, you'll help the nation wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean, green power that will keep the land beautiful for generations to come. I will be back with soon awesome content very soon, as all the lovely Gavin Kiwi Evie Shoebridge has just been filming a lovely review of a super massive people hauler. I'm not going to spoil it. Go check it out. Link in the description. And of course, I will be back here next week for our usual roundup show. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of your day. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kekite! See you next time!